All right. What up, everybody? What up? You just said that, says Bull's Riser. I don't know what I just said, but okay, okay, gotcha. Hey, Glenn Sutton is in San Diego. My daughter is in there. My other daughter just got back from San Diego. So we had two in San Diego yesterday, and now we got one left, and her boyfriend is with her. She went kayaking in some uh, San Diego uh, ocean today, and they got hit with some crazy wide, uh, crazy waves, and they had went, they capsized. I said, that sounds, that does not sound fun. Um, but anyway, so we had to pick up Chloe at the airport, the Aeropuerte here in Atlanta at uh, 5.30 this morning. Great times, great times. Again, if you guys have questions, put them in all caps like Andrew did here. Look at that. You can't retire in this economy. Of course, um, that's not a question, right? You just, that's, a, that's a statement, a de declaration. Um, because, you know, Andrew, you know, those guys, not the brightest bulbs. But uh, it is all right. But that's no, that's half right. That's half right. That's a statement. And I said, if you have questions, put in all caps. Of course, pulverizer again doesn't quite understand the rules either. Can I retire? Have some money? Not caps there. And my man Ted, terrible Ted up in Maine. Are y'all getting another nor'easter coming up there? You get another one up there, terrible Ted. And Denise, look at Denise. What's up? Yeah. In fact, it's funny, Denise. We're going to uh, go into something that you are featured in the Daily Cost. Denise is featured in the Daily Cost. We'll do it live. We'll do it live, says Frenchie. See, Kevin Hawthorne's here. All right. Right on, Kevin. Good man. I don't care what they say about you there in Lakeland, Florida. Greg Rose of another. So, Rose of another. I don't know what that's called. Bruce in the house. There's a beach in Sand Day. How much do I need to retire? Uh, more than more than you got, Dan. Sorry. Um, it was a, what was the cluster? Chuck B in the house? No, actually, people who work for low pay and didn't send any money will be fine because Social Security is going to provide them almost all of their resources um social security is going to replace almost 100 percent of their income so that's they're gonna be fine you know there's a beach that has oh gotcha there's a beach in san diego that's the same rip current um really steep beach i can't remember the name okay gotcha what would i recommend to do with inheritance dude i have no clue <laughs> pay off debt that's what i would do but, i mean I, I don't know what i'd recommend to do you're assuming that they qualify for Social Security. Many people don't. Well, and many, how you have to describe many. What, 10% of the population? Because uh, if they're working, you said they're working, people who work for low pay uh, generally implies that they have, uh, that they worked, i.e. they paid Social Security. So unless you say that they didn't make the four, the 10, the 40 quarters, I mean 10 working, but this would imply many people work for low pay and didn't save any money, maybe in trouble. Um, I missed you, bra. The storm was a cluster of 16 inches of big maple. Whoa, for real? Damn, dude. Big maple down your yard. Oof. Uh, oh, the storm was a cluster. Gotcha. Was it? All right. So, but wasn't there another one? Like when we were up in Boston, we were actually thinking about going to uh, see the main Celtics on Thursday. And uh, some of the people I, I know on Facebook, um, and whatnot. I said, don't come up here. It's uh, half of Cumberland County is out of power. So I said, man. Uh, then I heard there's another snowstorm going through. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Um, that's nuts. We got display seizure. You're probably watching the Purdue. I think they're tearing it up, aren't they? Um, anyway, so let's start our fun with this. Uh, Blacks, yeah, but why would they take new kayakers? Like my daughter and her boyfriend never been kayaking. Why would they take it there? That doesn't make sense. Yeah, the storm was over. Was, uh, uh, yeah, Plymouth Rock. Uh, I could put it in my uh, over, overhead carry. It was fun. I like, dude, I like that area. I like Boston. I like it all. I like it a lot up there, actually. I'm a big fan. You know, I'm a New Englander by by birth. You know what I'm saying? I like New England. I like Boston. Uh, Plymouth was, was fun. I very much enjoyed it. Um, it's cold, it's wet and dreary, but uh, it's fun. I enjoyed it. Of course, the Plymouth Rock is very small, but uh, you know, it's just crazy to think that's where the Mayflower people 
you know, if the history that we're told is, is true, and I, you know, whatever it is, what it is. It's just, uh, it's crazy to think that people on the Mayflower, you know, sitting on the boat for what, six weeks or something like that, in the wintertime show up, you know, right before winter kicks in and there's no house, you know, they don't have any, I mean, just, there's no warmth. Yeah. There's no, it's just right there. You know what I'm saying? It's like the wilderness and whatnot. Um, crazy. Man. And, uh, and they survived. A lot of them, a lot of them died, but, uh, they survived and, uh, and it's crazy. And, um, yet here we are with like, uh, here, uh, here we are later on saying how bad, you know, these people were the colonizers and whatnot. It's just the whole thing. Stupid. Um, we saw you. We saw you walk around Har Harvard Way in Cambridge. Yeah, you didn't really see. You just saw the video I did, right? I mean, uh, yeah. Well, that's, I said, yeah. Why would you come right before the winter time? It's crazy. No, he just got one of those stories are as true as they've been told. I don't think they are, frankly. I just don't. But. Uh, you got to wonder. But so check this. I want to show you guys some. This is uh, pretty funny. Um, let me just pull it up here. So we made the Daily Coast or the Daily Cost, whatever the hell it is, some you know, far left website. And uh, some of you guys are on here. And Denise, you're on here as am I and uh, other people here, too. Let me just bring it up real quick. Andrew Biggs emailed me. He said, uh, he said, uh, and we're gonna, I'm hoping to do a live stream with him on on Monday about the Republican Study Committee proposal for Social Security. Andrew's more in favor than I am. And that's fine. I uh, there we go. So we're gonna look at this uh, Daily Coast. <laughs> it's uh, it's actually kind of funny. And um, so let's check this out. So here's a Daily Coast. Um, which is a you know, far left website uh, news. You can do something about whatever. And uh, I don't, again, I don't follow the daily coast. I'm not familiar with them just because I've heard of them and uh, you know, some, whatever. Anyway, so we got shock. The monkey said scales falling, falling from eyes. All right. And then we got 722 recommended stories and 234 comments. All right. So this is the daily coast. They love them. Some Joe, Joe Biden. And they go over here, and he talks about. So this is a pretty well-known left-wing blog. I mean, it's just all they're saying. Not some Greek guy or something like that. You know, started it. Um, uh, Purdue, Purdue won. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, they. Uh, Purdue had a. I mean, NC State just wasn't making any shots, dude. Scales, exactly. We're calling us lizard people. Yeah, scales. Like, that's what I thought too. It's like scales falling. All right, so anyway, so here's the thing. Josh Gamlin, a voice of conservative financial wisdom on his YouTube channel, Heritage Wealth Planning, has always preached the gospel of fiscal conservatism and Trumpian values. I don't think I preached the gospel of fiscal conservatism, conservatism, frankly, but okay, because uh, I'm going to share with you why I don't later on in this live stream. Uh, with Magan's slogans peppered through his financial advice, his followers have hung on his every word. You guys are just waiting on my every word. Pulverizers falling on my every word. Because my every word is so sacrosanct, pul pulverizer no longer listens to uh, Pink Floyd. Ironically enough, he specializes in advising on Social Security, even has a book about it. But a re recent revelation, revelation seems to have shaken him. And they give the uh, my video I did on, you know, the Republicans, are they that stupid when it comes to Social Security? The Republicans he championed are now eyeing Social Security reform, a move that would fret, threaten the very bedrock of retirement for millions, including his adherents and clients. Have we been suckers at one point even decrying the Republicans as a bunch of Ben Shapiro's running around? Did his audience accustomed to his staunch right-wing rhetoric re rebel? No. And here's Denise. Denise, you made the Daily Coast. Way to lose 70 million votes. Check out the comments this guy says. Here's Jay Holiday. It's a deal breaker for me to continue being a Republican. Here's my man here. I'm done with the Republican Party. I'm no longer a sucker. I will speak with my vote in November, and I'm a one-issue voter this year. Hands off Social Security. Um, Bob, here's Q Humor. Look, Q Humor, you made it. I saw the same video from Devin. I knew it would make you mad that Republicans' proposal want to get rid of the Social Security benefit, spousal benefit. That'd be stupid for Republicans to do that. Um, here's my, my man here. 
No, not near retirement. It's probably anyone under the age of 61 and 364 years old. Yeah, 364 days old. Uh, I don't know who Chloe Benson, Beauty, Mark Davis. Um, I am 55. I, have to, I, ha, I don't know who this person is. Chloe Benson, Beauty Boxes. I'm 55. I have to wonder if I would be considered near retirement or not. I won't be voting for Republican because I won't gamble that I'm not. So, so then we got all that, and then we got all these comments. It's just kind of funny. So, uh, yeah, 234 comments. And I, uh, things are lining up since Matt C for a once in a lifetime wave election. Now, Trump still has a chance of winning, but crap like this is giving us an opportunity for electoral dominance we haven't seen since FDR. I hope we pull it off. We might. Um, right here. It's a nice thought, but betting on MAGA eyes being open is not my plan. All right. Um, if it indeed is a de-election, it'd be really nice if some policies were more were then enacted, which you know move the needle toward san towards sanity for a long time. So this guy obviously gets because the Democrats have been too nuts for too long. He's hoping we get some more middle of the road. Um, and then look, first priority: kill the electoral college, then kill the filibuster. Yeah, that's that's democracy right there. Um, in my opinion, any Democrat senator who supports the filibuster is more interested in their own power than the principles of democracy uh, because it, the filibuster is not democratic. Um, all right, let's see. Hold on a second. Uh, I want to show, uh, hold on a second. Uh, yeah, I, I agree, agree with this. Reform the gerrymander, set rules to keep districts sensible, ex and then expands. I actually agree with that, what I'm saying. Expand Supreme Court. Yep. Once expanded, implement reforms such as one president gets only one in one appointment to the Supreme Court. Okay. Um, hold on a second. There was a couple I just want to kind of show you here. Uh, uh, hold on a second. Because uh, they, they really go off on, you know, us being like Trump. It's, it's funny, actually. Um, hold on a second. I want to see if I can't find it. Uh, the only way to kill the Electoral College is by a constitutional amendment. Yep. Uh, 100%. You're not going to kill it by voting. It's got to be a constitutional amendment. You can't just have a law. I mean, literally a constitutional amendment. I'm just saying. Uh, anyway, I just want to show you. Uh, yeah, Maine just joined. Yeah, stupid. Maine just joined the uh, the Electoral, not the Electrical College, but the popular vote. Uh, just idiot, idiots, dude. There's a, the Electoral College is magical in how it works, but whatever. I mean, it is what it is. Um, well, so I just a couple of things on here. Expand Supreme Court to 13 justices because, you know, nine, but 11, uh, 13. That's just a good arbitrary number. Uh, D.C. has a new state. Give Puerto Rico a new state. Yep. Combine North and South Dakota. I mean, all these guys are just freaking uh, just the whole. These guys just have no clue what the hell they're talking about. These, I mean, these left wing people are nuts, dude. Um, they're nuts. All right. Right here. I want to show you, though, I want to show you a couple of things in here. But I want to get out of this. Um, hold on a second. Independents are moving away from Trump, and Republicans are dropping out of their party, moving independent. Uh, we don't have to convert the MAGA cult members. We need to focus on independents and be part of the blue wave. All right, because MAGA cult members like me, we're, uh, we're never going to be uh, going to the blue. And that's, that's, uh, that's the funny thing. These people think if you're upset with Republicans, you're going to vote for the Democrats. But the Republicans don't understand, though, unfortunately. The Republicans think if you're upset with the Republicans, you can see how crazy the Democrats are, and you'll keep voting for the Republicans. But I just want to – there's a couple other things here, though. Um, uh, hold on a second. All right. right here. The point isn't to get the MAGAs to change their mind. That's not going to happen. It's to get the uh, the mind of traditional center-right Republicans who held their noses, noses and voted for tr Trump twice. If we can appeal even 2% of these voters, we see pretty significant changes in the electoral map. Pull 4%, we have a massive shift in wave election for the Democrats. All right. Lastly, we need to stop doing Trump's work for him. He wants the world to believe his supporters are unbreakable and never leave him. See, this is where these people are wrong, dude. All right. In reality, Trump is his absolute weakest point since the swearing in back in 2017. He is losing support. We shouldn't buy the hype that supporters are all still with him. See, this is what they don't understand. Trump is losing support and his supporters aren't all with him. It's very important to talk nicely to your friends who supported Haley. Uh -huh. His supporters will always be with him, but will they take the trouble to come out and vote if it does not look like he will win? All right. I'm telling you, he's got... 
um, hold on a second, there's a couple of things. I, hold on a second, hold on a second. Yeah, there's a couple of things in here. It's just these guys don't get it. Um, because one other guy said, oh, hold on a second. Right. I don't think most MAGA eyes being fully open is likely, at least not the blue collar and working class ones. Sadly, their primary motivator now is fear and anger, and they're much too deep in misinformation and propaganda. So the people at the Daily Coast, they get the true information. They're not subject to propaganda. It's moderate, fiscally minded Republicans. Uh, fiscally minded Republicans, they exist. I'm, I'm curious they exist because uh, supporting foreign wars and all this is not fiscally minded. And independents, I'm more focused on. So they're going for the squishy middle. They call Rove. They're, they're following the Karl Rove model. If we can just pull 2% of the Republican Party in, we're going to be winning forever. All right. And this guy says, I'm especially encouraged about gerrymandered districts. Yeah. The whole gerrymandering pr pr process involves creating a lot of laser thin districts where you likely win and cramming the opposition to a few voting districts. Yeah, that's 100%. Gerrymandering is such a scumbag thing. But the, the MAGA cult is outnumbered. All right. Um, and they have some other things, which about me, like, Right here. Uh, all right. Indeed, comments like these on typical internet platforms are usually accessible. But here, the Daily Coast, you get people who are knowledgeable and really care about policy details. If we get enough uh, people like that, it's game over the Republican snake oil uh, peddlers. I'm still skeptical we'll make a landslide, but at least I'm op optimistic we'll win the presidency. Hey. Um, anyway, this is pretty interesting. Yeah. And this would take away the Social Security spousal benefit. Uh, the verse with the command of care for widows and or orphans must have been edited out of the Trump Bible. That's the, that was the 100% why the whole thing about the Trump Bible thing just bothered me. It's, it's just going to be used so heavily against Trump. And anything he does, well, that's not the Bible. It's just the whole thing. Is just, it's just you're stepping into your own trap there, Trump. is stupid. But anyway, there go, and there, this is a good point, though. There goes one more potential ding against Republicans push to keep women at home. What I'm saying, get rid of the spousal benefits and women got to go work which is exactly what they want. They want women to work so the children are raised by the state. I don't know how people don't get this. Um, uh, yeah, and the fact that many Republican wives don't have the 40 quarters of Social Security approved work than the, in the Democratic Party, 100%. The vast majority of stay-at-home moms are in the Republican Party. It's just fact. So if you want to get rid of spousal benefits, you're, getting, you're killing your freaking baby. That's just, so, just so stupid. Uh these GOP widows would be so hard hit in their old age, but anything for the Trumpian cause, see, that's where they're missing out, man. Anyway, so there's a lot more, and they, they kind of go off on me saying, oh, even this guy says he's got $300,000 of debt. What a, what kind of financial advisor is that? Um, anyway, so the, what, I, but these guys don't get, I'll put the link there to show us. What these guys don't get is, is they think we're adhering to Trump, and that's not true. Trump is our weapon. We are not the weapon for Trump. He is the weapon we use. This is what they don't understand. They think we are being led around by Trump. No, it's the exact opposite. We are leading Trump. That's where we're saying, look, we need you to go after those guys because we can't do it. So you are our weapon. And that's what they don't understand, man. These people think we're loyal to Trump. No. Our priority, and I'm speaking for myself here, but if you read the conservativetreehouse.com, which you should, and other um, anti-GOP establishment sites, you recognize Trump is the weapon we have. It's the only one we got. There's no other weapon like Trump. Are we loyal to Trump? As long as he's loyal to us in terms of taking out the GOP establishment. The first order of business is to take out the GOP E. We've been saying this for freaking going on 10 years now, since 2015. 2015, when Trump came down with escalators, we said the first order of business is to take out the GOP establishment. There's no other way around this. And as such, they're not, we're not loyal to MAGA, i.e. Trump. We're loyal to any guy who's going to go up there and say, we got to renew the Republican Party into a populist right-wing party that is supposed to be. That's America first. It's a patriotic party. Now, again, for me, Trump was disappointing in 2020, 100%. Trump's done a lot of stupid things, 100%. You know, some things he's just like, why are you still going after DeSantis? It doesn't make sense. You know, but you know what is he's a, he's you know you never get controls from that's okay. You know, you're just like whatever. I wish you wouldn't say some of the stupid side. I literally don't care about his tweets, but why are you going still going after the census? But whatever, doesn't matter. At the end of the day, Trump is the weapon, the only weapon we have. 
And these people think, oh, if Trump says go friggin' jump in a, a, a fire, you're going to do it. No. No. Because no one else has tried to take out the GOP establishment. No one else has. And Trump not only has he tried in winning, by the way, but he's losing vast amounts of wealth to do this. And you can talk about that true social thing. I don't buy that for two. I don't think that platform is going to stick for two seconds flat. I don't buy it for two seconds. The idea that Trump is going to have billions of dollars because true social went public, I don't buy it for two seconds flat. I hope he does, frankly, and that'd be great, but I don't buy it. But anyway, at the end of the day, the issue is Trump went into office and lost a hell of a lot of money and literally is facing jail just because he stood up against the establishment. No one else has, I mean, literally, other than what's his name, the freaking socialist uh, who I'm a big fan of. Oh, man, what's that guy's name from the 1918s, 1910s, who railed against World War II? I'm drawing a blank. The, the socialists who railed against the uh, uh, the World War II, World War One, Woodrow Wilson railed against the Rockefellers. Can't believe I can't remember that guy's name. There's a socialist I just forgot. He ran for office and he went to jail because he railed against World War One and Woodrow, Woodrow Wilson. Uh, no, no one I'm aware of has actually gone into politics to lose money or go to jail, like uh, like like potentially Trump and and that guy too. I'm drawing a blank. Can't believe I can't remember that guy's name. And when I'm talking about, he ran the Socialist Party many, many years. Eugene Debs, that's right, right on. My man, Eugene Debs, huge fan of Eugene Debs. Not because he's a socialist, but I mean, it, it, socialism back then is different than what it is today. I mean, you had massive amounts of corporate America just is, is completely dominated by a couple of companies that were just running ramshod over individual citizens. Yeah, right on, Kevin, Eugene Debs. I would say uh, I would actually say Woodrow Wilson is probably the worst president in U.S. history, actually. Um, yeah, I think there might be some fraud. And yeah, I, I don't buy that for two seconds. Man. I don't know about what's going on there. Um, I, I don't know. Yeah, you actually had workers back. One hundred percent. You had one hundred percent. Fine. Um, now, I, I like I only thing I only reason I saw this guy, you know, my man Andrew emailed me about it and I saw on the. Uh, I have this thing on Google. I didn't know when I set it up. As every day I get this report, if, if my name is out there, and I don't know how I did it. I frankly, it's the first time I've ever seen it where someone else was talking about me on some other website. But uh, but anyway, these guys they don't understand. The minute Trump acts a fool, I'm dropping him like a two like a freaking hot potato. When I mean act a fool, the minute he starts negotiating with the Dems about like the whole bump stock ban thing, that was Trump lost some support for that. My COVID thing, I'm still pissed about COVID. I don't care what anybody says. You know what I'm saying I think Trump could have done better with the January 6th protesters and saying, I got your back. Uh, but at the end of the day, these are small potatoes to the overall scheme of things, which is we got to change the Republican Party. We can't take on the Democrats with the games, with the players we have. We can't. We are losers. We are losers. And the only way to take on the Democrats is either join the Democrats and take it on internally, which is long term commitment that the left is very, very good at and we are not good at. Because we have families to raise. I mean, that's just all there is to it. Many on the left don't. Like the, the Democratic Party is essentially single women now. I mean, they dominate the whole thing. It's, it's, it's a, the party of the single women. That's just a fact. You know, it's just, it's literally dominated by those people. And the and Republicans need to be the party of families. Uh, that's all there is to it, man. Uh, so entrepreneurs and families. That, that's where the Republican Party should be. If you have a mom and dad, we want you on our party. That's all there is to it. We should say, Democrats, we're going to see the single woman vote to you because we're never going to capture that. We're going to get some, you know, conservatives and whatnot. But generally speaking, we'll see that to you. But we want to be the party of working families. And that's where we should be. And the way you be the party of working families is never, ever, ever, ever entertain the idea of getting rid of spousal Social Security benefits, survivor benefits, eliminating Social Security. It's the whole thing is just so friggin' stupid. And the only reason this is happening is because Republicans, are, the current Republican establishment is playing their role. There's no way a real political party in the beginning of, a, of a, a, an election year would even raise the idea of having anyone think that they're going to have the Social Security benefits cut. It makes no sense other than they're freaking corrupt. That's all the only thing that can be. It makes no sense. There's no upside on making that stupid proposal on the Republican, uh, Senate, or Republican Study Committee. Because it wasn't, it was too broad. It didn't say anything specific. Some guy said on the, the Daily Coast, he goes, it just says if you're under 60, uh, you could lose your, you have a benefit reduction. The Republican Study Committee didn't say anything about that. Didn't say anything. It literally said, let, let you to believe anything. 
You're saying anyone who's near on or who's currently retired or near retirement will not get a benefit reduction. What does that mean? Define that for me, Republicans. Oh, so that means anyone. I'm 53 years old. Does that mean me? Because I'm not near retirement. I'm kind of near, but I'm not that near. You see what I'm saying? What does that mean for spousal benefits? What does that mean for benefits if you make over a certain amount of money? The Republicans put $85,000 in there for some ungodly reason. So if I make it 90,000 bucks, does that mean my benefits reduced? I mean, the whole thing's just, all you're doing is saying all these people could get their benefits reduced. What is the benefit of it uh, that will make Social Security more solvent? Yeah, that's not going to fly. That, that's not going to fly. It's idiotic. And that's why the Republicans need to, whoever the current breed of Republicans is, needs to go to the freaking, move them on out. Move them on out because they're freaking, that's literally, they're that stupid. But I don't even think they're dumb. I think they're just playing the role. 100%, man. They're all, the, the good majority of Republicans are there solely uh, to serve for the, the, the interests, not of the Democratic Party, not of the media, but the people who control the media. Remember, and Rush Limbaugh used to say this. is wonderful. Man, I never thought about like this. I always thought the, uh, uh, the Democrats controlled the media. No, 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 no. It's the exact opposite. The media controls the Democrats. The media control. And once you start thinking like that, you change. It's like, oh. Ah, so the media has narratives and the Democrats go along. The Democrats never have a narrative that hasn't already been dis- determined by the media. That's all there is to it. It is really, I'll never forget Rush Limbaugh saying this. Oh, it makes sense. I got it. The media controls the Democrats and a, and a sizable m- minority, frankly, of the Republican Party as well. And as such, you got to get rid of that. And then once you get rid of that sizable minority of the Republican Party who are you know, um, knee deep in with the Democrats, then you can really refocus. You can say, okay, now we're a real opposition party. Let's get this party started. You see what I'm saying? Or, or else you're just going to go the way of the Tories in England, and they're dead. I mean, they're just because Boris Johnson, I mean, look, I fell for him. I, I was an idiot. I remember I did a video when he won. They won this major landslide, a huge landslide. I mean, it's like the, the labor looked like they were dead. They were dead. And four years later, now the Tories look like they're dead because that's how bad they screwed up the COVID. Almost like COVID was manna from heaven. Hmm. To destroy Trump and destroy the Tories, huh? And the Australian uh, Republican Party, huh? And solidify Justin Trudeau. Almost like COVID was just happened to go in line with creating other things like Build Back Better and whatnot. And did any Republican stand up against it? Nope. 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 All right. So anyway, I, I thought that was interesting. So we made the Daily Coast. Denise, if you're still here, you got quoted in that. And uh, yes, I, I know, Kirk, I just I I don't just so bad. It's just so bad politics. Yeah. And there's Andrew. I don't trust. I, look, I don't trust Trump on anything. I can't lie to you. But the fact I literally I don't I, I literally think Trump is going to I, I, my concern. Look, I'm there's no there's no alternative. I mean, I want Trump to win. Because I think he's going to be pissed off enough that he's going to seek retribution for the faults that have happened. But I can easily see him turning away 100% and saying, you know, I, I easily see that. You see what I'm saying? But 100%. I mean, you can't do the bump. And then, look, I fell for that, too. What I mean, it's like, oh, if this I, before I saw things the way I see now. In fact, I just saw an article, Pulverizer, if you're still there. I had an art. I did a video where I put uh, cat ladies. That's exactly right. That's for the Democrats. I did a video as Pink Floyd, the most overrated band in history. That was like four years ago. And um, and I'm still not the biggest fan of Pink Floyd, but that was, I have a, I've had a reawakening of my viewpoints. And I was looking back at some of my comments that I had written, and uh, I was very, very, very uh, pro-Israel, if you know what I'm saying, uh, back then. Very pro-Israel. And it's just, and I'm not going to delete. I thought about taking down the video. I'm not going to, because this is my transition as I've changed. I'm just a different guy now. COVID made me see the world a whole bit different. You know, I've always been Republican. I've always been a right winger, but COVID changed me remarkably. I said, oh, Israel is our allies. That's our best friend. And yet they're mandating the vaccines. They're freaking, they're not, they don't like, they love them some gun control. They're big on 57 flavors. And yet, um, you know what I'm saying? And I, I don't understand what, and then, you know, there's a certain segment of the Israeli, uh, whatever their freaking house is called, the uh, House of Representatives, the Gwinnett, not the Gwinnett, Nested, I think, that literally wanted to make it illegal to prophesize Christianity in Israel. Like, eh, and that didn't pass, but I was like, eh, I'm not the biggest fan of all these things. I'm definitely not sure that there are allies when it comes to things that are very, very important to me. Um, that's just a fact. But anyway, and I, anyway, so I saw some of my comments and I said, yeah, I should take this video down. But I said, no, I'm just going to leave it up there. I mean, 
You know, it's, I was a different guy back then. But COVID was different, man. Changed everything. So, oh, so Israel's like mandating vaccines. You can't have your own firearm. You know, you, uh, you we love the 57 flavors. I was like, yeah, eh, not the biggest fan of any of that. And then, well, you must love, you must want Israel to be, be dead. I said, no, I don't want them to be dead at all. I just literally, it's not my business. Let the two ethnicities fight itself all over the Middle East land. I get, what, I, but why should we be involved? Anyway, but and so Trump on the bucks, the bump, the bump stock, the Israel thing. Mark Dice just posted about Trump saying Congress was owned by Israel. This is like Trump from 10 years ago, that everybody in Congress was literally owned by Israel. That's what Trump was saying. You see what I'm saying? And Trump turned on that like freaking. I was like, well, OK, that's kind of weird how he just changed like that. Just as weird. So, look, I, you know, trust, trust, but verify. That's but again, that's our weapon. All we got is the weapon that we, we have at hand, and Trump is it, to reform the Republican Party the way it should be. The tariffs, I mean, everyone's like, well, tariffs, tariffs are a good thing to protect your industry. I, look, this is, for me to say that, being from the Austrian School of Economics, it's tough, but you look at tariffs, we need more of them. We got to protect the industries that make our country run. It's just a fact. I mean, have you read about China and their dumping of solar panels? So solar, China's produced so many solar panels. It's just, it's all crap now. And all these in, internal domestic solar companies are going bankrupt because they can't compete with China dumping. We have these things called anti-dumping laws. Well, we're not using them. You know, so we're just not. We haven't been using this for a long, long time. We thought this, this isn't free markets, free trade, free movement of people. It's just not. Anyways, I was listening to a Archie Bunker today of all people. This is very interesting. Someone had posted Archie Bunker's talking from like 1975 or something like that, talking to Edith. And I got other things to talk about. We'll get into it here in just a second. Now, Archie Bunker says, they want us to do all this electricity, elect, make electric this, electric. It's crazy. I was like, damn, that's nuts. He goes, oh, make electric this, electric that, electric this, electric that. And then they're going to say, we don't have the electricity for it anymore. So now you can go buy these other things. And he said, it's all conspiracy by big business saying, we want you to buy all your stuff for electricity, electricity, electricity. And then later on, when the energy crisis, we don't have any electricity, so you should buy these other products that don't use electricity. I said, man, aren't you bunker? You get it. You get it. It's exactly right. It's a conspiracy of big business. That way we say, okay, electrify everything. Then you buy their product. And then you say, oh, we don't have the electricity, so go back to using freaking whatever it is. Oh, buy that product. Oh, now we have electricity. It's, it's all conspiracy, dude. It's crazy. Anyway. Um, Let's see. Big Johnson says MAGA only wants Trump as a weapon to make lips cry against their own interests. Uh, Trump lost money by being president. Are you mad? He and his family gripped it the whole time. Mm -hmm. right, well, that's what you think, but uh, okay, um, whatever. Uh, the, so Big Johnson calls us food, fools. No, I don't want to make lips cry. I want to make the Republican Party change. And then I want to make lips cry. One hundred percent, absolutely. And Trump does not go against my own interests. One hundred percent. That's I mean, just you, you, you guys keep saying this. That's what the Daily Coast and the liberals say. He's voting, you're voting against your interests. Now, first, I'm a white man. All right. So inherently, the Democrats have nothing for me. The Democrats do not like white men. That's just a, white married men are not welcome to the Democratic Party. There's a certain group of white married white men who are welcome in the Democratic Party, which I am not part of. So then I have not, they have nothing for me. I mean, they've so, shown their anti-whiteism for years and years and years and years. And it's not just because of George Floyd. It's been going on for years that Democrats have been anti-white. It's just a fact. So there's nothing for me. There's nothing there. And if, you, if white women who have white sons, I don't know how you can align yourself with the Democratic Party, given their anti-whiteness. It's, it's mind-boggling to me. We know for a fact that it's happening. And it is a great replacement theory, too. It's not a theory. It's literally happening. So just as a white guy, the Democrats have nothing for me. That's just a fact. So my only alternative is not to vote or vote for the Republicans. Well, the Republicans are, they're kind of like, look at us. We're, we're not as bad as the Democrats, but, you know, they still, you know, the, the Republicans aren't very loyal, if you know what I'm saying, to the people who are loyal to them. And as such, we need to get rid of the new, we need to get rid of the leadership of the Republican Party. And Trump's the guy to do it, you know what I'm saying. And there's no other way around it because the other guys aren't going to do it. Ted Cruz not going to do it. Uh, who's the other guy? Was DeSantis, maybe, but I, you know, eh, I don't know, maybe 2028. But, uh, you know, I got my issues with DeSantis, but it doesn't matter. It's water on the bridge now. So Trump is the only guy. And as such, Trump gets it when it comes to things we need more of. We need more tariffs. 
100%. We need to keep Social Security. And I would say even expand Social Security. And I'm going to show you something else we need to be doing here in just a second. All right. Uh, yeah, new bird. <laughs> we can't say who controls the media because, yeah, um, uh, we can't say that because it's a hate crime, by the way, in many Republican states to say anything about the, uh, if you're not following Anomaly, you should. Uh, he actually had a take that even Matt Wal Walsh is seeing. He's like, wait, it's illegal, illegal in a bunch of right-wing states to say anything about, I can't even go there. Um, all right, so it's, uh, exactly. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that's the thing, man. Trump, uh, see, that's, that's what it all comes down to, uh, Vanguard Confish. See, Va Confish is a Vanguard thing right there. If Trump gets in there, he's, it, this better be, it, you know, but it's going to be tough, man, but he, he better start doing some stuff to clean it. I, I just think he was caught with his pants down, frankly, thinking the Republican Party would, would support him, and he was just wrong. Took him two years to realize they, they weren't going to support it. All right, so now I want to, uh, oh yeah, one percent, brother. I tell you, the Democrats do not. They hate them black men. They have literally, the Democrats. They know we know they hate white men, right? Because inherently, white men aren't on the reservation. They've always thought that blacks would be, and they hate. Look, have you not? You might not be following this if, on sports media, but I do, because I follow Kwame Brown and Jason Whitlock and a couple other black guys who are uh, who are basically pretty based and. Uh, there's a guy, I forgot his name, Acho or o, not Ocho Cinco, but Acho, some Manuel Acho or something like that. Talk about that uh, lady, uh, what the hell's her name? Angel Reese, yeah, Angel Reese from LSU. And, you know, she's all, she, you know, she's basically the villain, you know, following Caitlin Clark around, going like this. And it's just idiotic. And then, uh, you know, for 10 seconds after they won the national title, and then they lost, you know, Caitlin Clark showed him up. And Angel Reese, like, oh, I'm a victim, I'm a victim, I'm, you know, basically white I'm black and say, oh my goodness. And this black guy said, you can't, you can't be the villain one day and then be the the, the victim the next. You got to choose. You can't do that. You, you just can't. And uh, and Jason Whitlock's like, holy crap, I can't believe there's a guy who's actually standing up and saying you can't do this against you know proud black women. And then the very next day, this guy was emasculated, and Jason Whitlock's like. What is it with these black men being emasculated by, you know, women, black women? What, what, what is it? It's crazy. So these black women said, "How dare you say that about Manuel Acho? And Manuel Acho is a black guy. How dare you say that about Angel Reese?" Bah, 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 bah. And the next day, he's like, "Oh yeah, um, I, you know, I should have never said it. You know, yeah, I, I take the criticism seriously." And and call me Brown, same thing. And it's like. What is it with these black women are going like basically leading black men by their freaking noses? It's crazy. It's crazy. And the reason is because the media puts the black men who are willing to be led by their noses in prominent places. Charlemagne the God, these guys. They don't put people like Jason Whitlock or Kwame Brown in prominent places. Stephen A. Smith, they put them in prominent places. The people who are willing to be led around by their noses are going to be in prominent places because they serve the role, which is the... Uh, make black men be more feminine. That's just a fact. And they tried that with white men, and it's worked. But a lot of white men are saying, you know, we're, we're we, you've been hating on us for so long, so blatantly obvious. We don't have anything to do with you guys, so we're out. We, we've been, you know, I'll never be a Democrat ever because they hate me. It was just all there is to it, dude. They hate us, and as such, it's like I get, I literally, you know, again, if, if you're not making Democrats mad, you're not doing a good enough job. And the way you make the Democrats mad is to have a wife and have lots of babies. That's how you do it. You go to church and love Jesus and love the Lord. That's the way you make Democrats mad because they hate that, dude. They hate it. But anyway, so what like Black Scorpion said is freaking, they don't want black males either. Black males who think for themselves. They, they want all kinds of men, white or black, who think what they're supposed to be led around by women. But the, and that's interesting. I, it's, I wonder how many black guys are going to come. Like, we've been saying this for centuries, centuries. For years and years and years, that black men are going to see the Republican Party as they're more aligned. I'm, I'm not sure. We'll see. I, I thought in 2020, definitely, I thought there'd be, I thought well above 
40 uh, percent of the black men would vote for the Democrat or the Republicans and think and they were near that. I think we got 20 percent of black men, which is pretty good, but we only got like four percent of black women. It's one of those causes that almost seems hopeless, and, but it always seems hopeless until it doesn't. All of a sudden there's this massive wave and you're just like, oh, wasn't expecting that. that. But we'll see. We'll see if that ever happens. But anyway. Um, Let's see. Yeah, what, what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly, Marie. Runs, run, Republicans run pro-Trump and govern anti-Trump, what I'm saying. All right, so I want to show you guys this, where the this all stems from, actually, because I think it's pretty interesting. Let's get rid of, and this is an article my man sent to me. Today. Um could have sent this to no, that wasn't it. Yeah, right here. Oh, yeah, this is good. I thought this is pretty fun. Yeah, right. You know, South Dakota has HB laws, and we all know what if you it's just so stupid. It's so dumb. We have it here in Georgia too, and we all know, I mean, what they're using their hate speech laws on to define anti-Semitism. And it's it's so broad, it's so stupid, it's just like what? it's embarrassing. Um We've been hearing that vinyl for years. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I hope. Um, all, right. all right. So I want to show you this is so I want to this is going to we're going to dive into this. Right here. I forgot who sent this to me. I would not read it, read it, because I don't read the USA Today, because uh, I like ladies, if you know what I'm saying. I don't read the USA Today, because I like ladies. You get it? Uh -huh. That's pretty funny, Josh. Josh, you're so funny. Just, I got to put my... Oh, there. Look. Can I do it like that? Oh, there you go. Kind of cool. Let's see. I want, like that. I want the big... I don't want two things. Okay. No, that's not bad. All right, so let's uh, let's go into this here. Uh, this is pretty interesting. Uh, hey, Jack, Z, and millennials, here's why you may miss out on the great wealth transfer. We got Medora Lee, right? And she had written this on April first. So I want to show you. Still there? There we go. Where to go? There we go. Where to go? Okay, let me stop sharing for a second and find out what happened to the article. All right, here we go. Let's see. All right, so anyway, hey, Jen, all these guys, you're going to miss out on the wealth transfer. All right, so here we got Judy and David Konkak. They could nearly run out of money and unable to leave their kids much more than a pittance. Even though they're both college degree graduates, David's 84. He had a successful business that allowed Judy to stop teaching and stay home and raise her two children. They traveled. They owned cars and a home. They sent their two kids to college and saved for retirement. They're crushing. I thought we spent our golden years sitting on a beach in Hawaii with Mai Tais, Mai Tais, something like that. Instead, her husband had a stroke, surgeries, and prostate cancer, all of which had deplete, help, helped deplete their savings. Interesting. Interesting choice of words. Help deplete their savings. Now, she's back at work part-time earning about 15 bucks an hour, right? Um, and she's turned to the nonprofit, the Senior Source in Dallas, to help pay her bills. With all their savings gone, she suspects that their house is all she'll have left for her kids. Right. Interesting. And then health care or inheritance. If the contact struggles with health care costs, as older adults sound familiar, it's because they are. Even with insurance, Americans struggle to pay for expenses like premiums, co-pays, co-insurance, and uncovered expenses. As a result, the significant wealth transfer from baby boomers to younger generations uh, may not be so great after all. And then we got this guy. He says one of the biggest factors that drives wealth depletion during retirement is health care costs. And, all right. I got you guys. We keep going now. So check this out. We're, there's more to this, so hang in there, because I'm gonna we're gonna dive into this a whole lot deeper than we're doing here. I just want to kind of share with you the negativity stuff here, and then we're gonna dive into it. Say so who's what's going on? 
One third of Medicare beneficiaries, including more than half under the age of 65, said it's difficult to afford health care. Huh. One third of Medicare beneficiaries, including more than half, were under the age of 65. Hmm. So who are those on Medicare under the age of 65? That's weird because you don't get Medicare until you're 65 unless you're on disability. Huh. Huh. So they're going to sit. So I, I, want, I cannot stress this enough. One third of Medicare recipients, including half of those under the age of 65. So let's just put in the people on Medicare who are over the age of 65. That'd be what, less than about 20% of Medicare recipients, if even that? Because if over a half who are under 65 were on Medicare, those on disability, yeah, they got disabled. Sucks. That's what Medicare is there for, is once you're disabled, you go on Medicare. Remember, Mer Medicare is don't touch my Medicare. Oh, by the way, Biden is going to cut your Medicare. I, I didn't do a video on that today. I'll do one on that tomorrow. Biden's already talked about cutting your better Medicare. But anyway, I thought that was very interesting that they're saying one half of those on Medicare, including those under the age of 65. Well, if you're under the age of 65 and you're on Medicare, that means you're disabled. All right. On top of that, you're not you're you're basically the baby boomers were the last baby boomers, 1964. So now there's a so if you're gonna survey baby boomers, you better stop at 1960. The people are 60 years old essentially today. That's the youngest baby boomer. So, but they're saying one half of people under the age of 65. I have a friend of mine who's on Medicare, he's on disability, and he's you know 48 years old. So he's not transferring money to, to wealth, as this article is saying. I just find it very interesting how they conflate one third of Medicare beneficiaries, including half those under the age of 65, as if Medicare beneficiaries under traditional retirement age are saying they're struggling, difficult to afford health care. Interesting. Oh, and then we're going to do a survey by the Commonwealth Fund, which we'll get in that here in just a second, because these guys are uh, are not they're not up to any good. Oh, man, I keep doing that. Hold on a second. Let me go back. Gee, I just didn't need to click on. Hold on. Hang tight, everybody. Hang tight. Hey, so this is the Commonwealth Fund, a nonprofit focused on healthcare issues. Hmm. More than twenty percent, including those forty percent again under the age of sixty-five, say healthcare make it, expenses makes it a Harder for them to afford food. So again, more than 20%, but they're throwing in people on disability. I'm talking retirement. The people they're talking about in this article about transferring wealth to baby to younger generations. They're conflating the two, which is a typical media thing. So basically, we'll just say for simplicity, 20% of people on traditional Medicare, 65 and above, say healthcare expenses make it harder for them to afford food and utilities. Hmm. Well, guess what? It makes it harder for me to afford food and utilities too, because my freaking healthcare expenses are through the roof. Check this out. Then we got this lady, Kathy Kurt Steve, something like that. She's 64 and she lives with her husband Jose in Arizona. They pay more than $1,500 a month in healthcare premiums when she was laid off by Amazon to buy Cobra. Right? And insurance from the Obamacare were even worse. I thought even more expensive. I thought Obamacare is the solution and Medicare is the solution. What these guys are saying is Medicare is not the solution. Obamacare is not the solution either. Oh, okay, so you lie. But check this out. I thought it was interesting. So Kathy is 64. Jose is 62. She got laid off, and now she's having a hard time. She got to pay 1500 bucks a month for Cobra. I even spoke to brokers, but costs were comparable to Cobra with uh, talk about Obamacare. You know, check this out. It's almost better not to have anything and have access to health care huh. because Medicaid, as we don't have anything, that gives you better health care, supposedly. Hmm, interesting. But check this out. Now she consults part time to help pay for health care. She hasn't been able to find full time work, and she believes due to her age, she can't find a full time job. Her daughter is getting married soon, but won't be able to help pay for anything. She knows, but as a mom, it's heartbreaking. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, wait a second. So she can't find full time work because her age. So she works part time to help pay for health care. What happened to old Jose? Why is he not working? They don't say it. They just talk about her. Where's Jose doing? What's up with that? Huh. 
We're the middle and upper middle class. We pay our bills and have a little extra, but we're spending a lot in healthcare, so we're not in a position to, to help or leave money. Okay. That's interesting. Dispelling the myth of the great wealth transfer. Right here, the baby boomers, 1946 to 1964. Hmm. They own 52.8% of the wealth in the country, and researchers expect a generational transfer of $84 trillion in assets. Most millennials expect to inherit at least $350,000 from their parents or family members. So remember, even the first people that we talked about, she's still leaving a house to her children, even the first people. And that sucks, man. I mean, it sucks. I don't There's always the poor. The poor will always be with us. The poor will always be with us. More than 25% of Americans believe paying for long-term care will diminish their children's inheritance. You're damn right. You should pay for long-term. And what I'm saying, not long-term care insurance necessarily, but I'm saying, yes, if I have to pay for my own long-term care stuff, yes, that will diminish my children's inheritance. That's the way it should be. Um, and I get like how they say longer life expectancy. Uh, show me the proof there. Um, right here. And again, what they do is the typical stuff for they do. So we have healthcare has gone up. Healthcare services has gone up by 114%, outpacing the 81% rise in overall prices. And that's interesting. So I want to show you something else there, too. Here's shop staring. Um, uh, oh, but before I do that, on average, the annual per person cost of home care in 2021 is about $42,000. And uh, but the annual cost of a nursing home is more than 108,000 for a private room. Hmm. The annual cost for nursing home is about 108,000 for a private room. How many people use those private rooms? You notice they don't say that. Like literally, how many people? What's the statistics of this happening? Well, by the way, you know what else doesn't happen when I have to use a private room? Like we're I'm going up to see my mom uh, next week in Virginia. My brother and sister we're gonna meet up there and we're gonna clean out her house. Uh, so we can get her into a long-term care facility. Um, you know, because she's just not good. Physically, she's been bad for many, many years. Uh, so we're finally going to, you know, bite the bullet and get her in a long-term care facility. Well, she is. You know, she's going to have to give up cigarettes, and she don't want to do that. But anyway, so guess what doesn't happen when you're in a long-term care facility? You no longer have the cost of when you're living at your house. You no longer have the property tax and the maintenance. You have to, uh, with all the food is provided for. It's going to be expensive, don't get me wrong. But it's not like it's 108000 on top of what you're paying to live in your house in Dayton, Virginia. The cost of Dayton, Virginia are now gone. And you, re- you have all this cash from the sale of your home, which is going to go to the nursing home for sure. Well, that's, I don't understand. Why is that such a – why is – I literally don't understand why this is so – like people are like, oh, my goodness, I can't leave money to my kids. Yeah, well, welcome to the club there, sister. Yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I don't get it. I literally don't understand like, oh. It just shows you how bad it is. Anyway, let's keep going because I thought it was interesting. Where they say, and, and they never say, by the way, how many people actually go to $108,000 per year for a nursing home. They don't say. And then they say, 60, you're not seeing this, I know, but 60% of healthcare costs come averaged after the age of 65. Remember, what they're saying in this article before was over a half of the people. <laughs> Under the age of 65, said healthcare costs were too expensive. And, and see, the conflating here drives up the wall. Oh, and then we use a committee for a responsible federal budget. Josh Gordon, at the, and that's where I want to dive in here just real quick. Can people avoid going broke to leave a legacy? Um, and they talk about annuities and all this other stuff. All right, so now I want to go into the Commonwealth Fund because I thought that was, oh, shoot. Or did I not? Yes, I did. Hold on a second. Let me bring it back up. So I said, uh huh. So anytime you get uh, a survey, you always want to see a hey, who's a sponsor of the survey. Because hey, look, we know for a fact, we know for if the media is so they're interviewing the people from the Commonwealth Fund, the Center for a Priority Budget. We know for a fact that the media is far lefties. So then you got to assume that the people that they're interviewing are far lefties as well. So I want to share with you some here. We're going to go to this survey from the Commonwealth Fund. And we're going to say, huh, what's, what's the specifics of the survey? But even, let me share with you. This is, this is interesting to me. Because this is what, right here. Can Medicare beneficiaries afford health care? 
This is from the Commonwealth Fund. And I said, huh. But before I want to look at that, I said, what is, what's the deal with the Commonwealth Fund? Let's take a look, shall we? Let's look at the Commonwealth Fund. Uh, affordable quality health care for everyone. Okay, interesting. Oh, we support independent research on health care issues and make grants to promote better access, improve quality, and greater efficiency in health care, particularly for society's most vulnerable people, including people of color. If you're a person of color, you're society's most vulnerable. How does that make you feel, POCs out there? I thought I was doing pretty good. No, you're vulnerable. You're vulnerable. The Commonwealth Fund is going to tell you you're vulnerable. People with low income and those who are uninsured. So we're going to focus people on color with poor people and those who are uninsured. So I said, okay, that's interesting. Let's learn more about this fund. All right. It's, it's established by Anna Harkness. It's among the first women to start a private foundation. Oh, right out the gate. Their commitment is to equity, diversity, and inclusion. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. So they are really committed to equity, inclusion. All right. So let's keep going. Oh. The Commonwealth Fund Commission on National Public Health System was established in 2022 to articulate a, vi a vision for a truly single-payer system. The NHS in Canada or in the UK and then whatever the stupid thing they have in Canada, nationalized health care. One with capacity to protect America's health, reduce inequities, and prepare for a nation to address major health problems and future crises. Huh. So is Commonwealth Fund, could they have any interest in telling, talking down how bad the current health care system is? I'm just curious. Could they have any interest in doing that? What do you think? Of course. They, all right, let's keep going because I thought it was funny. And so let's take a look at their finances and investments. I just thought this would be fun. So we're going to see their financials. And we're going to come down here. Hold on just a second. And so they're paying. I'm actually going to go to uh, their investments right here. So here's their endowment, a billion dollars, dropped from 979 to 832 right there. And that's when the market crashed in 2022, so that's no big deal. But still, they got $832 million in their endowment, all right? And of that 832, how much did they actually, oh, right here, let's take a look. Mission aligned investment strategies. Huh. Exclude companies, investing in companies that manufacture firearms and small arms ammunition. Exclude from investment portfolio all companies that manufacture tobacco. Huh. Interesting. To develop and implement an investment policy statement that incorporates high levels of environmental, social governance into portfolio managers, as well as investment strategies from industries considered anti-ethical anti to the fund's mission. Implementing a plan to reduce fossil fuel investments with a goal of reducing those to zero. With the divestment in liquid assets, continuing exposure reduction in all asset classes. Okay. Interesting. Oh, look at this. In 2019, they began to explore opportunities to align endowment management more closely with the foundation's commitment to anti-racism, i.e. anti-white, diversity, and inclusion. Hmm. The, through discussions with staff and board members and finding from a demographic manager survey field, <laughs> we, we had to survey people. We learned that racially diverse and female-owned investment firms were underrepresented in our portfolio. Interesting. Interesting. And then we... Achieved, uh, established long and short term gender and racial diversity goals. Quotas. They signed the Associates of Black Foundation Executives Investment Manager Diversity Pledge. Interesting. So basically, they're a bunch of lefty clowns who want a national single payer health care. Very interesting, too, because we go to financials, we're going to see, you know, they got basically a billion bucks and they're donating about 4% of their assets. It's got to be 5% really uh, towards their greater good. All right. And I think we got in here um, someplace in here topics about us. Let's go to about the fund. So they're donating about four to five percent of their, their assets to serving the greater good, which means they're keeping the assets for themselves is what it is. All right. So let's check this out. We talk about the we talk about the divert. I uh, want to see our programs. I want to go to foundation history because I want to show you guys how bad it is out there. Wasn't it funny reports? How was it in reports? Maybe it's in report. Hold on a second. Ah, let's look at 2018. Ah, man, I'm going to draw. Oh, man, where was it? Hold on a second, because I got it about us. Maybe it's about us. Let's programs. Let's see. Oh, man, where was it? Climate, climate change in healthcare. Interesting. Climate change in healthcare. Uh, ah, I'm not going to find it. I think we already went there. Um, let's, let's 
Let's look at our programs. Uh, I can't believe I can't find it. Anyway, the point was is they don't pay taxes is what I'm, where I'm going with this. Grant. Let's go look at grants here. Maybe it was under this. Search all grants. Uh, I can't. Anyway, they, they're a 501c3. They. One second. They don't pay taxes on their income. I can't remember. Damn. I was, I was hoping to show it to you. Fellowships. Let's see if I can hear. Yeah. The United States has long been marked by racism and discrimination. All right. Anyway, the, the, all I'm trying to say is these guys are far, Let's actually look at – I want to look at their, their uh, board of directors too here. So let's go back and we look at their board of directors about us. We're going to look at the uh, – where the hell was that thing? Man? Ah, I can't believe I can't find this. Um, yeah, see so universal coverage because apparently Obamacare didn't do what they say. Health equity, yeah, that's not scary. Our staff, let's go here about us. And we're going to go to our staff. Where the hell is the board of directors? We're going to go to our staff. Um, look at these winners. This guy's the president. That guy's, trust me, he cares about you. He cares about you. Where is the board of directors? Let's go back to this right here. Oh, man. I can't believe I can't find this. Yeah. Board of directors do the benefit fund programs for open staff. Benefit fund for fellowships, grants, programs, tourism topics. Go back here. All right, right here. Uh, uh, no, it's not there. It was. Yeah, nah, I don't know. Anyway, if you look at the, the board of directors, what I found was interesting. How can I not freaking find this, dude? Crazy. Hold on a second, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on a second. I can't believe I can't find the board of directors. Was it under about us? Grants, fellowships, about the fund programs. Hold on a second. Let's see if I did. I don't think it's it. Uh, Second, they have offices in New York City and uh, Washington D.C. Anyway, so the board of directors was very interesting. I just I can't find it because I'm under pressure, and when you're under pressure, you lose it. But I just thought it was interesting. They had on their board of directors was check this out. Uh, it's very interesting. To see Hold on a second. Uh, I got to find the board of directors. Um, right here. There she is. I was very interested to find this lady was on the board of directors. Sheila P. Burke. Interesting. Who is Sheila P. Burke, you might ask? Oh, she was the main, she like basically controlled Bob Dole is what it was. All right. She was chief of staff to Bob Dole. My dad used to have me go back and forth to D.C. to curry stuff for his health benefits letter. And Bob Dole was the uh, Senate majority leader back then. And uh, it, it's just a clown. I mean, he's an American patriot, but he's a clown political. He, he was part of the unit party. And my dad said, you know, well, basically, Sheila Burke runs everything in D.C. through the Senate because she was Bob Dole's chief of staff. And Bob Dole didn't know, his, you know, it was just like John, just like all these guys. They don't know what the hell's going on. They leave it to their staff to do. And I said, well, she's remember, and, and Kansas also had a lady named Nancy Castabon. And Kassebaum was was a junior senator in Kansas, and she signed the Kennedy Kassebaum Health Care Act, which was what the genesis of COBRA. All right. Nothing inherently wrong with that. But again, it took the insurance out of health insurance and made it a government program. That's all there is to it. 
you know, the more they started doing this, the more it became more expensive. And of course, now it's too late now. They can't fix it because it's so damn expensive. But can't. But anyway, so the point being was we had Nancy Kassebaum partnered with Ted Kennedy to bring us the uh, the Cobra Act in 1995 or 96. I think it's 96, which sounds good in theory now, but back then it wasn't because back then you're like, this is just going to make insurance more and more expensive. And exactly what happened. We all predicted this and 100 percent right. Anytime the government gets their mitts involved, uh, it makes it worse. Anyway, so the Republicans controlled the Senate. All right, the Republicans can control the House, and it passed. And Clinton signed it. Who else was a senator from Kansas? Oh, it was Bob Dole. But Bob Dole isn't doing it. He's run for president. So who's in charge of the Senate, of moving stuff in the Senate? It's Sheila Burke. And not a, not a right-winger by a stretch. She is a government employee, first and foremost. How do we expand government? And now she's running... Uh, she's on the board of directors of the, the Commonwealth Fund. And if you just look at the board of directors, let's put it this way. It doesn't seem very diverse, if you know what I'm saying. Let's just put it that way. There's not many black scorpions if, who's on here on the, the board of directors of the Commonwealth Fund. So while, they're, uh, while their staff looks pretty diverse, and they don't show pictures of the board of directors, how ironic, because if they show the pictures of the board of directors, you say, not very diverse. And then you have Sheila Burke on there. I just thought it was very interesting. These are the people who are running the shows who control everything. These people right here. And that's that this is what Trump is up against. He's not just up against freaking Looney Joe Biden and Sniffy Joe and his clown of a wife. He's up against the Sheila Burks of the world, the Commonwealth funds of the world. And they got more money than they need. That they need. And they're all tax exempt. All. And the Republican Party has made a huge mistake, critical mistake, as I did for many years, in thinking the, the taxes are our biggest enemy. It's just not. If the facts are the Commonwealth Fund has a billion dollar endowment and they don't pay any income tax, I don't even know if they pay property tax. I don't know. If I'm the Republican Party, I'm saying we're going to tax all the endowments 100%. Trump started to do that. It was great, actually. Not very much, though, but it started. And that's what we just need. The camel's nose in the tent just a little bit. I would start taxing the hell out of these endowments because they are, they're non-government organizations. You know, there's nonprofits. They're not serving the interest of Americans. They're not. They're bad. They're up to no good. Are there some right-wing foundations? Sure. But they're vastly, vastly, vastly outnumbered. It's, not even, it's just even silly. I started saying we're going to tax you. And what I would do if I was a Republican Party, I was thinking about this. I would say these universities who are also not not taxed. I'd say we're going to make you pay real estate taxes on your holdings. Like in Harrisonburg, Virginia, James Madison University owns like half the city, and they don't pay they don't pay real estate tax, which means everybody else has to pay the real estate tax to carry what James Madison doesn't pay. They're not paying their fair share. There's not. And if I'm the Republican Party now, the, the Republican Party from D.C. can't go to this Commonwealth of Virginia or even the Harrisonburg, Virginia, and say, hey, you got to make James Madison pay real estate taxes. But what I would do is I'd say, if you don't pay real estate taxes on your buildings, you're not getting any funding. You're, not, you're going to be, not be part of FAFSA. See, this is what the Democrats do. Their Title IX thing and all that, that's what they do. They say, we're going to withhold money unless you do what we say. And if I'm the Republican Party, I'm doing the same damn thing. I'm going to say, we want, because he's non- Entities, these non-tax entities, these non-government entities, and these tax-exempt entities are against us. They are our competitors. Or, uh, frankly, they're our enemies. And if the Republican Party was smart, again, they're not, but maybe Trump is the one guy who can do it. See how it's kind of tied all this in here? Commonwealth Fund has a billion-dollar portfolio. And it's not even that big compared to the Rockefeller Foundation. Oh, and who was I just reading who was being funded by the Rockefeller Foundation? Oh, Bill McKibben. Bill McKibben, a big green clown, a big green scumbag, big green, been pushing big green agenda for years and years and years. How is he getting funded? The Rockefeller Foundation. So the Rockefeller Foundation wants to push all kinds of left wing trap, tripe, tripe, which hurts our bottom line. They need to pay taxes because their crap that they're pushing is hurting our bottom line, but they don't pay taxes. They got billions of dollars. As long as they donate 5% to various charities, which are all themselves non-government entities, tax exempt, 
And they're all committed to one purpose, one purchase, uh, pro purpose and one purpose only, which is social justice. Why would the Republican Party not say we're going to tax you guys? We want you guys to pay real estate taxes on your endowments, on your uh, on your holdings, on your real estate holdings. We want you to pay income taxes on your income. Or if that's what I do. And then part two, we want you to contribute more than five percent of your assets every year. We want more than 5%. We want 10% every year because we want these endowments to be shut down at a certain time. We don't want these things going in perpetuity for freaking hundreds of years because remember Rockefeller, Ford, uh, another guy, the Carnegie, Carnegie, all these guys, all these foundations are completely oblivious to what the, uh, are completely against what these guys, well, Henry Ford. You think he's happy that his foundation is so far left? And then you say, what do you do with the funds you get from these taxes? Oh, oh, what do you do with it? You fund Social Security and Medicare. Easy as pie. It's a winning strategy. You say, why should the wealthy, why should Bill Gates, and who is it just a, a Warren Buffett, who donated billions of dollars to Bill Gates Foundation? No taxes transpired at all. Hmm. What does Bill Gates Foundation do? He gives all the money to these clown out, outfits out there. And they just give it to us. Literally, it's like this ancestral. They give it to each other. That's what the Republican Party needs to do if they're serious. And the only one to do it is going to be Trump. No one else is going to do it. No one else is going to do it. And as such, I hope Trump's pissed off enough now to say, you know, I thought I was operating under good standing with these people. And now I realize they hate me. I, I'm, if I get back in, I, I'm going to make them pay. I want to make them pay and say, no, you can't treat me like this and expect to have no consequence, just like they've done to Trump himself. No. Yeah, actually, that's what it was right on. All right. Anyway, that's the, uh, hey, look at Kerr. 43, my fourth child on the way to September. Right on, man. All right, so that's all I got. So what uh, What do you guys want to talk about? Uh, yeah, what am I saying? Nothing. Hey, look, man, there's. Look, I get it. We want to leave something to our children if we can, but we don't freaking fly coach so our kids can fly first class. We don't eat ramen noodles so our kids can eat ribeye. No, that's not what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to freaking crush, raise our kids as well through, as best as we can, like Kim has done with her children. You know what I'm saying? And freaking crush. And then once you're done crushing, you get rewarded with a life well lived. And that doesn't mean you light cigars with $100 bills or you go buy a new test and all that. That just means you can have some comfort. For the first time in any generation, no generation before the baby boomers have ever had this luxury of comfort in their later years. I don't think it's antithesis to say, hey, we, we, can, we can have some downtime. I do think it's antithesis to say, I'm going to spend this all on me, 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 me. I don't think that's good. But if you're sitting there thinking, oh, man. I, I'm, I'm not going to eat ramen noodles. I'm not going to fly a coach, um, but I am going to do what I can to make the, to basically glorify God and honor Him. Yeah, see, this is the problem here. Here's what John this problem. John says, "I don't want to do that because Democrats will make it worse." And so, what's happening now is it's becoming worse anyway, because Republicans have no stick. They don't have a stick. They always have a carrot. They don't ever have a stick. And the stick is do what we say. Or else you're going to feel the friggin' the, you, you, literally. Or else you're going to feel the pain. And Josh says, "But Josh, well, there's not a slight on you, John. The John, but this is what happens all the time. If they do it there, they're going to do it worse. Yeah, and they're already doing it worse anyway. I mean, literally, this was already happening. So at least you can say, uh, my bit about keeping me from retiring, but was keeping you from retiring was very. I'm not sure what that was, Kevin." Um, only by agreeing to agree, but not hate each other over them. Not sure what he's saying there. Yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, wait. I don't know. Are they actually paying huge salaries? Ooh, yeah. See, are they actually paying huge salaries to the family members on the board? Yeah, I, I actually, what I would, uh, look at my man Big Johnson, right? Sad that Big Johnson is actually small, where it means, where he's trying to be big, if you know what I'm saying. Well, good for you, brother. You must be Jenny McCarthy and don't believe the science. It's crazy to think that us uh, anti-Vs are aligned with the, with the right wing now because five years ago, 
the right wing called me Jenny McCarthy and what's that guy's Robert De Niro. I was like, well, I'm going with those guys. All right, what's uh, what's going on here? I'm in rare form. No, I just say, oh, this is funny, Andrew. It sounds like you're saying my last live stream was boring. Well, screw you, Andrew. Screw you. <laughs> Oh man. Well, that's another thing. So I, I would 100 percent Davis. So Davis says start by ending student loan. They're not gonna end it. What they need to do is bring it back so that way if schools will be held accountable for the debt their students take on. That's what has to be done. I mean, this is where oh man, my man John here was a couple days ago. Look, John, I'm not bashing here, but this is when the Republicans are in control, they don't use the stick. Because so many people are like, well, if the Republicans do, it's going to be worse when the Democrats get in. You're like, man, just, you got to bring the pain. You got to bring the pain. You got to say, remember the video from uh, Platoon? Take the pain. Tell the Democrats to take the pain. You got to make it hurt. That's why the Democrats win all the time. And people are afraid to challenge them because the Democrats are not afraid to bring the pain. The Republicans say, we're going to make it hurt for you guys to have aligned yourself so heavily with the left and gone so nuts. And only one's going to do that is Trump. That's it. And we're going to say, you've been running ramshot on this freaking society for decades now with no. Did you hear about this Panoma College? This is fantastic. I just read this today. I was like, this is great. Um, I 100%. One of the Republic, every, I couldn't agree more with you, Big Johnson. That, that, I've given up on this idea. What, I could not agree more. Republicans never make the government small, ever. When have they ever cut a bureaucracy? <laughs> ever. Ah, oh, man. I completely, look, Big Johnson, he gets it. I get it, man. And if they're not going to make it smaller, well, at least make it work for you. They're not going to make it small. They're just, not. this is where I've all come full circle on Social Security. I said, it's never going away. You know, I never would have signed it if I was in Senate under uh, or House under FDR. I would have I would have voted against it. You know what I'm saying? But it's never going away. It's going to be there forever. Medicare is never going away. It's going to be there forever. So at some point, you you just love Big Brother. It's OK, because you're not getting away with it. You're not going to get if you can't get rid of the Department of Education, for heaven's sake, you're not getting rid of Social Security. And Medicare. It's just not going to happen. So if you're not, you might as well freaking make it you so you can get political power to stop the insanity of a cultural what's happening, the cultural thing here. The cultural rot is happening, and partly because the Republican Party has just sat around, like, just so focused on taxes. We don't want any more taxes. Well, the government's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Taxes, yeah. I mean, they've been reduced, I grant you. And, but but that's is that happening? Is that helping? I, the cultural rot is significant. At some point, you guys say, yeah, we got to fight back against this cultural rot. And the, the Democrats are for bigger government, but I hate to say it, the Republicans are too. How do we know? Because they love them some military spending. They love them some Ukraine stuff. They love them all that. They love all this stuff. You know? So you're like, all right, you're not going to beat these guys at their own game. So you might as well play the game and try to win that way. Because the Republicans will never win. They just can't. It's impossible. So like, all right. So we need to raise revenue and we need to win votes. How do we raise revenue? Why don't we go after where the money is, the endowments do. And how do you win votes? You go after the endowments and you say, we're going to put this in Social Security. We're going to create our own lockbox for Social Security. You say, instead of going after entrepreneurs, like the Republican Party seems to be doing when it comes to Social Security, or, or freaking widows, which is freaking mind-boggling, or stay-at-home moms, we're going to go after the foundations and the endowments. Say, no, we're going to take part of that. And then we're going to go after the school. Say, if you got kids that default on their student loans, they got a right to write it off in bankruptcy court. And again, this is George Bush who passed the pension. Uh, there was things as the Pension Protection Act or the bankruptcy law in 2005. Again, I was for all this stuff. Dude. I was such a fool. I was such a fool. The Democrats are right, 100%. This has been insane that you can't write off your student loan debt. So the college is like, this is great. We get all this federal money and there's no liability responsibility to us. No, it's freaking awesome. Let's hire 5,000 more DEI instructors. It's crazy. And you have these freaking, a lot of them are poor black kids. They get stuck with these student loans. They, they can't write off. Anyway, Bob Dole. Uh. Oh, no way. Kim, your brother died a month ago? Oh, Kim. 
Say prayers. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just pray for Kim. It's been a rough, rough couple years for her. Oh, maybe learn from her experience. Just please, Lord, help people get their wills done, their beneficiaries done, their powers of attorney done. Just help them to transfer their assets in a least efficient fashion, manner, while their surviving spouses and children are not struggling with the death of a loved one unexpectedly. Oh, Lord, give Kim the strength to just, ah, oh, I just feel so bad. And there's so many people going through what Kim's going through right now, Lord. Just give them the strength to recognize you are with them. You are with them. We pray in Jesus' name. Oh, man. That's Jeremy. Jeremy's in the Philippines. Dude, I guarantee the Heritage Foundation is a nonprofit too. I guarantee. I, I <laughs> Big John said, "Do not listen. I would tax everything. No tax exempt organizations to include churches. None. No tax exempt organizations. If you make income, you pay tax on it. It's just that simple. No tax exempt organizations." No charitable deductions. I like high standard deductions. I think it's wonderful. Trump's tax bill is great in that regard. Took a lot of people off the tax rolls. 100% high standard deductions. Once you're above the standard deduction, and then we have flat rate taxes. You can do you know high standard deductions, 15 and you know, 35. I got no qualm with that. Something I don't care. You see what I'm saying? No tax exempt organizations. No charitable deductions. This will never fly. But no real estate deductions. All that. And the reason for that is simple: because a vast, 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 vast majority of people don't itemize. The only people who itemize are the, are the wealthy, like me. I itemize, but it's not that. You know, I got four kids, so it's like my itemization is uh, is bigger than my standard deduction, but not that much. That's just a fact. Yeah, 100%, Penelope. I guess how much of your inheritance uh, is how much uh, your last year's expense could be, 100%. Um, the school's, at 100%, Ted, the school's got to have skin in the game. They have none. It's like literally, it's, <laughs> again, it's all the risk is on the on the, the poor kid and all the gain is on the rich school. It's like literally the reverse robin. We rob from the poor and give to the rich is what they're doing here. And they're just saying, we're going to take money and then it was all guarantees, you know, basically privatize the profits, but socialize the risk. I just don't how to I just this is so mind bodily obvious to me that the Republicans can't see it because they're controlled opposition. The biggest lot rise in government, like Medicare Part D, at Department of Two. Let me tell you what happened. My daughter yesterday at Department of Homeland Security, well, the uh, TSA. So she got freaking. So she just got back from a student loan or a student uh, abroad thing. And she got, suppose, a random search. Uh, three times she was called to step aside. And they went through every aspect of every outfit of clothes she had. Right there for all to see. You know, underwear, patting it down. All this stuff. To see if my daughter is up to no good. I'm sitting there thinking. And at the same time. Thousands of people are just swarming the border. No one's checking them. In fact, we're flying them all over the United States. But my daughter, who's an American citizen, coming back from abroad, <laughs> is being violated. You know what I'm saying? Literally violated. Not physically violated, but certainly emotionally violated, as if she's a common criminal. Just to make sure she's not up to no good. And it's random. And yet, just over the board. So this is, and who passed the whole Department of Homeland Security? Well, Republicans did because we need to be safe. We need to be safe in the airports. Almost like, how dare I say it? I'm not going to say it. Almost like, but I'm not going to say it. Oh, 100%. The federal student loan program, program just, and, and the same thing. Anytime they get their mitts involved, it increases the price. Why is healthcare more expensive? Government involvement. That's just a fact. Why is student, student uh, tuition more expensive? Government involvement. It's literally just that simple. When the government gets involved, the prices go up every time. It's crazy. Um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't tax any Social Security distributions. Everything's stupid. But, I mean, be it as it may, I mean, I, I think 
the Democrats, see, the Democrats are just better politically. That's why I know the Republicans are part of a controlled opposition. The Democrats say, hey, we want to get rid of your Social Security taxes. That, that sounds great. Republicans are like, well, we want to make Social Security solvent by taking Grandma Jones's benefits away. Uh, what? No, we're not. We're, you know, anyone who's on Social Security now won't be taken away. But, you know, if you're near Social Security, if you're near retirement, you could be. Oh, that's a real winning strategy there, Republicans. Yeah, Big John's here, all right, man. All right. Are you are you the guy on the uh, Daily Coast website? Are you the one saying who comments the guy on the Daily Coast who put my video on there? Which I appreciate. I mean, I like people watching it. He says he posts some comments on here. I don't ban people's comments. I mean, if you're, you're not you, but if people are you know clowning, I'll ban them. But you know, I, I typically don't ban people other than they're getting real stupid. But uh, he says he posts some comments on there. Um, I wonder if that's you. All right. Here's my man, Ted. Do I think Trump tax cuts go away completely or they work out some kind of compromise? I don't think they go away completely. Like they got the QCD stuff done, the qualified charitable distributions. That was done with, a, I think that was Obama. It was it Boehner? Whatever, never Boehner, but it's, it's just another thing. Boehner. All these years, anti, anti-dope, anti anti-marijuana, anti-marijuana. He gets out of office. Now he's the, the freaking on the board of a marijuana programming uh propaganda machine i just was so, so stupid i'm apparently not a 501c yeah because you gotta pay tax exactly i don't so i don't think they'll get rid of them all um i you know i yeah i'm not sure i i, I will see i mean it really depends i mean the democrats will have a even if the democrats retain some areas they're gonna have a hard time just getting rid of them all you know what I'm saying? Because that is going to be a tax increase, and everybody's going to see it. All these idiots who say it's not a tax increase, the, the Republican tax cuts did not save them tax money. It's just stupid. Now, there are some cases, I grant you, in terms of salt, state and local taxes, I get you. There are some people who pay in blue states who paid more because of the salt reductions. And those are generally people with significant uh, high-value houses with high property tax. That's just a fact. And um, and they can't deduct the property taxes uh, more than 10000 bucks. So I could easily see the Democrats doing that, get rid of the salt stuff, um, and just and and raising the top rates on high earners. I could easily see that. Um, yeah, I don't know if they'll go back to a personal exemption as opposed to just high standard deductions. I don't know. I don't know, but I could easily see them re- getting rid of the salt. The salt hasn't been as popular as I thought it should be because you know, again, what happens are some people are affected by these things, and those people have a big voice. Most people are not affected because our state and local tax deductions, most of the country doesn't live in New York and New Jersey. Um, well, New Hampshire is no state income tax, but still, I mean, high property tax in New Hampshire, um, you, know, you can't write it off on your federal taxes up to 10,000 bucks. But the high property tax is a big deal for a lot of people, state and local taxes, because we're basically the federal government subsidizing blue states. And I, I like it. If the blues get back, they're going to get rid of that two seconds, five, 100%. They want, you know, Massachusetts to be subsidized by the federal government. Um, long-term capital gains, you know, I don't think that's going away. Uh, you know, qualified dividends, I don't think that's going away anytime soon, if at all. It, it, that's too, it's too obvious of a tax hike. You know, if you're the, the part of the working man, you know, you don't want to, and it's stupid. And we know the Democrats are not, but you know, you just, they're going to, I mean, it will be restrictions. Like they do everything. They say, if you make more than this, you know, you have net investment income tax, essentially. Um. Maybe have the interest rate capped it. No, what we got to do is get rid of, We literally what we do is you say to the federal government or the schools, if you want student loans, yeah, I saw, uh, I saw Purdue get the win. Yeah. If you want student loans and your uh, students apply for, you know, they can't pay it, it's on you. It's just that simple, man. It's on you because you took the money, college. The kid didn't take the money. And obviously, you got to have to skin the game for the kid, too. I mean, you can't have the kid just say, oh, I can't pay it, you know, 50 50 or something like that. I don't care. But the school has to be punished for allowing these kids to get these loans and living, you know, they have these Taj Mahals at some of these campuses. It's like a freaking, you know, it's like you're going to these insane resorts on college campuses and that's just that's stupid it's insane all on on government guaranteed loans man. and the, you know why should i have to pay the freaking student loans 
the clowny kid from New Jersey who's going to go around sit at college for six years, smoking dope, smoking, joking, while the DEI administrators are getting 300,000 bucks. And then when they freaking they can't pay, it comes back on me to forgive it. And I screw that. dude. We all know that. And so the school, this see, I just, you have to have a carrot and a stick. You've got to have some punishment for these nonprofits who are pushing this crazy agenda. You get a nonprofit or schools. I'm telling you, you got to say no. We're going to make it that we're going to allow states to tax you in property tax. And the schools will scream bloody murder. Don't give a rat's ass. You guys have done nothing but propaganda on top of propaganda for decades. Don't care. And then we're going to say you're going to have to pay property tax. Now, your county could say, no, we're not going to tax you on that. That's fine. That's up to the county. But we're going to allow it in the federal tax code. For you to pay property tax. And if your state says we're going to do it, you're doing it. That's all there is to it. If you want to keep being in the federal student loan largesse. Oh, and by the way, if you want to stay in the federal student loan largesse, guess what? <laughs> Not only because this is what happened. Why do you think Hillsdale College is such a beacon of truth? Because they don't take student loans from the federal government. Because they don't want to be told how many, you know, what their quotas got to be. They said, no, we're not doing it. So they're privately funded. They said, no, we're not taking any student loan money. Why can't Republicans do the same thing and say, if you want student loan money, you have to do this? Literally, just that simple. We'll give you student loan money, but you have to do this. And what I'm talking about. And if, if you want to be part of it, if you don't want to be part of it, great. You know, go more, be like Hillsdale College. That's fantastic. Get the government out of it 100%. But if you want our money, you have to do this, that, and the other. You know, and the, Dem the Democrats are just good at this because the Republicans, they're not a true party. That's my whole point. Why like Trump is the man to fix the Republican Party. Um, yeah, I've heard of many different fair tax bills and flat tax bills, and uh, they're never going to pass. Uh, they're never going to pass because there's too much money uh, power at stake for congressmen to get their to wet their willies with the lobbyists, if you know what I'm saying. I mean, the Congress people, look, dude, these are, are a lot of them are just soulless cretins. And they're like, man, if I can go to Congress and I get some lobbyists to wet my willy, if I you know pass a special like and remember, the, the representatives don't actually write the bills. It's written by the lobbyists. The lobbyists say in the tax code, we want this certain exemption for my, you know, whatever I make. And Congress says, you got it. We'll put it in the bill. You know what I'm saying? And this other lobby says, well, we want this. You got it. We'll put the bill. But first, I got to wet my willy. You see what I'm saying? And if you just had a flat tax, all that stuff's gone. It'll never happen. Never happen. So it's not good. Um, I, I don't know, man. I, I The Senate looks pretty primo for the Republicans this time around. I mean, it's if the Republicans don't take the Senate this year, it's never happening again. I mean, it's just the the... This is the best year for the Republicans ever uh, to to take the Senate. If we can't get a Senate, it's this year we're 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 done, and uh, and I, that's going to be disappointing. I'm tr trust me, because even though I can't stand the Republican Party, the idea of Democrats in charge does give me the crease. But this is and that what's going to happen is Republicans won't learn. They'll say it's because of Trump we didn't win, and and you know they've been doing this since 2018. I just I I, I and. I, <sighs> So remember, 2018, Trump beat four Democratic incumbents. The first time that ever happened since FDR. All right, 2000 in the Senate, that is the Senate. Trump beat four Democratic incumbents. The party in power has never done that since FDR. And he gained seats. He gained one or two, I can't remember. He lost two, but he gained a couple. That never happened. The out of party uh, team usually picks up seats. Not only did we did they not, they actually lost seats and they lost four incumbents in 2018. That was on Trump. Now we lost the House. So, so Trump lost the House. Well, it was a pretty thin majority anyway in the House before that. And a lot of times the House slips over in an off-term election against the party in power. That's not crazy. It's, it's just it happens. Anyway, so we lost the House, but we gained in the Senate. And somehow Trump lost. 2020, well. Whatever you can say all day long that Trump lost, but okay. Now let's go to 2022. 2022, we gained back the Senate. We lost a couple of seats in the, and the we, we gained back the House. We lost a couple of seats in the Senate. Trump lost. Wait, wait, what? I mean, again, the out of 
pocket, uh, the out of party power team in power usually wins, not usually, going back to the, the most recent 30 years or so, typically has a good showing in the House, more so than the Senate. So we won the Senate, we won the House back, the Republicans. We lost a seat or two in the Senate. I can't remember, one or two. And again, Trump lost. Like, wait. So Trump lost in 2022, even though we won the House. And he lost in 2018, even though he lost the House. But he won seats in the Senate in 2018. And he lost seats in the Senate in 2022. And he lost both those times. That doesn't make any sense. It does make sense if you hate Trump. And they all hate Trump. That's the issue. If you hate Trump, it's like no matter what Trump does, well, he loses. In 2020, we can argue all day long about the insanity of the, the voting regulations and whatnot. And that, that's my, frankly, biggest concern. I'm not sure anything's been fixed. But you can't blame Trump for that. I mean, Trump's a federalist. He goes, let the states do it as they see fit. And that's what you want. You don't want a, a one federal election, man. You don't want the federal government in charge of, of state elections. That's crazy. What was that, Jill? Yeah, I'd never, I can't say that, that they're all like that, but uh, yeah, I, I can, I, I completely agree, Dan, like my man Andrew said the last time they were talking about, he said on a video I did about, uh, I can't remember what it was, but absolutely nothing wrong going to trades, dude, absolutely nothing wrong going to trades. In fact, if anything, we need more. Um, I just read today that Japan is bringing, I haven't read the article, I just saw the headline, so sue me. That they're bringing 800,000 Nigerian migrants to work because they don't have enough labor, labor supply. You see what I'm saying? And uh, I got look, I got no qualm with uh, with day laborers, I, you know, seasonal labor. I have no qualm with that at all. I just don't want them to be citizens. You know, so if you want to come to Japan, you're Nigerian, and you want to do some work and get some money, go back to Nigeria. I got no qualm with that. That's the way we used to always have day laborers, seasonal workers come here and they work and they go back home. That's the way it should be. Uh, yeah, Banner was always, yeah, he was literally crying all the time and smoking. Just, uh, yeah, Democrats will get their stop salt thing going. All right. Yeah, I don't know either, but, uh, you know, they, they can easily say, well, I mean, because the standard, the high the standard deduction has been a reducing taxes for poor people. I think it's also simplicity, too. I, I don't think they're going to get rid of the standard deduction. I just think they're going to bring back. Get rid of salt, the salt and state and local taxes. Dan says, My son is Don. I can't tell my daughter, my son is an electrician. I can't tell my daughter that is a good field to go into. He knows two people with major injuries in two years. He's been in the trade. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the issue. That's why they get paid more 100%. Um, you know, the trades are dangerous. That's why men get paid more. It's just funny. All these people, women need it, women's rights, women need to get paid as much as men. Be my guest, go work in the oil fields, go become an electrician, all that stuff. I was watching this video, this commercial the other day, and I was like Siemens or something like that. And they just had this chick. I said, like, like with a hard hat on, doing laborious work. I said, this is so freaking phony and so fake. Why are you doing that, Siemens? I don't think it's Siemens, but some company like that. I said, is there a chick who's doing that? Sure. 99% of the people doing that work are not chicks. So why focus on the one chick? Because we, we're just trying to make a point. Like, we're diverse. We're, we treat women all the same. No, we don't want that. We want to show the men. Why are you just demeaning the men who do that? It's just, I was so embarrassed. I was like, this is so stupid, man. Everyone knows that the chick isn't doing it. Everyone knows when you call freaking HVAC, it's going to be a dude. When you call carpet cleaning, it's going to be a dude. Everybody knows this. Everybody knows if you send your kids to school, it's going to be a chick. Everybody knows this. That does not mean there aren't some men teachers and there aren't some women who are doing freaking utility line work. I get you. The vast majority are men. That is uh, so dumb. Um, zero risk credit and offering majors that don't do any 100%. Yeah, exactly. The college I went to built a $150 million bat. And then what they'll say is they'll say, well, we get revenue from it. Yeah, not very many teams, even football, are net positive when it comes to revenue. Yeah, dude, this university is like a country club, 100%. Uh, we have the standard deduction as well, the personal exemption prior to Trump tax stops. My personal Trump tax cut as a single person was 300 bucks. Well, because of media, the media, man. That's... Uh,
Hey, look, U of M is talking about adding women's hockey. They also said they would need a second ice rink. How much does that cost? God, dude. I know. Then you have to take these other uh, these other classes um, that you're just like, dude, I don't, you know, I don't want to take gender studies classes. You have to. It'll make you a well-rounded person. Like, uh, um, oh, here's hey, Christine. I didn't see her. Healthcare rise because America's litigious. Yeah, I, 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 I tend to agree with that too, Christine. Healthcare rises because America's litigious and demands so many unnecessary. But do they demand in the? I mean, Christine, you're in that field, so Jill, Chris, Christine knows what the hell she's talking about. I mean, I, look, I'm not saying she's not right. I'm just saying at the end of the day, you know, we see our, the people actually demand these uh, unnecessary tests and scans. I actually think they're promoted. Uh, to get people to demand, but I think you're right. 100. percent It's death litigious, and there should be loser pays, I and mean, that's what we need to go. Like UK has loser pay. That's what it should be. If you take someone to court and lose, you should have to pay for it. But uh, but there's some too, Christine. You'd even you'd have to admit the more government involvement, the more the prices go up. And there's the correlation. It's so positive sloping. It's mind boggling. Well, student loans, anything that has the government involved, it's crazy because it's just more money floating around. Um, Look at Homer. My man, Cal. Did you get my email, Cal? Dude, Plum is not. Yeah, Plum, Plum is a tough gig, dude. I, oof. I'd be paranoid to do that. Like, get under. Like, I just, I, I'm claustrophobic. Like, getting under that tight thing where you can't. Oh, that creeps me out. Yeah, men build everything. I've worked a trade my whole life. What do you do there, Big Johnson? They do. You know, I had a, uh, I had a uh, class, Jeremy, and the lady said you get an A for like just you, the first day. I'll never forget. You all get an A. I said what? Yeah, it's just do what you feel that deserve an A. I said, well, I'm not going to do crap because I got other classes that make me do stuff, so I won't do crap for your. I'll show up, but I'm not going to do anything because you just said I get an A. Just do what I feel is whatever. I, this is in 1993 or something like that. I said, I have five classes. This one basically doesn't require me to do anything. These other four do. So I'm going to do the other four. But I said, why am I paying for this? Why am I paying for this? Crazy. Transportation industry. Yeah, I, man, electricity scares the hell out of me, Ted. I've always been scared of electricity. I'll never forget one time I was mowing my mom's lawn, uh, her husband's lawn. Well, my mom and her husband up in Maine. Nothing to do with electricity. But it's... Uh, you know, I had the um, for some reason I forgot what I was doing, but I had a, a you know a you know, five gallon maybe two gallon thing of uh, gasoline and, a, and I had a I had the uh, the mower and I was pouring the gas and I think I was lighting a cigarette, I think that's what I did. And as as I dumping the thing into the the gasoline into the engine, you know the the gas tank, I think the match I, I can't remember what I was doing. It's just idiotic and it just went like right in my like literally right in my face. I was like, man. I was like, I wasn't burned for life. It was crazy. I was just like, oof. And anything that sparks like that scares the hell out of me. Don't smoke, kids. Don't smoke. Um, Jeremy, me from me. That's, I mean, come on. Jeremy is G H E Y. You know what I'm saying? I'd attend a few jazz venues, of which I did enjoy and have like jazz music since. Well, G H E Y. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, it was, it was also stupid too. Uh, but yeah, I've always been afraid of like people. Like, you you can wire your own. I was like, nope, 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 not doing it. I don't trust myself, and I'm not. Uh, and I know people die from uh, with high current. Exactly, I, I know people die. It's, it's not anything to play with. It's always scared. Electricity, always. I mean, I'm not an expert, and there's no way I'm. I'm look, I can mess around the garden and screw something up. I'm not dying. You mess around with that freaking those lines run there. You know, high voltage, you know what I'm saying? Or I guess we low voltage, high current. Yeah, because current's the amps, voltage, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's 120 coming in. Yeah, that's what it'd be. But still, that'd kill you. Dude. I'm not trying to die. Um, whoa. Dang, that's crazy. I've been electrocuted twice work on my house. Other than just hurting, burning, wasn't too bad. Just on a 120 volt, 15 amp circuit. Didn't trip the circuit, so not the full amperage. Ugh. Ugh. Agriculture positions 
parts assembly. Uh, that makes me think of uh, um, outfits. Hold on a second. Let me read the lyrics. Hold on just a second. Lyrics. That makes me think of the song there. Uh, five years in a St. Florine foundry. They call it an industrial park. In hospital maintenance and tech school. Just a memorized Frigidaire part. That's the outfit by uh, Drive By Truckers. 220. It won't hurt, kill you unless you get away from ITM. Come on, Andrew. No one knows what ITM is. Ugh, Andrew. Oh boy. Unless you get away from ITM. What the hell does that mean? 220 hertz, but it won't kill you unless you get away from ITM. Somehow we're supposed to know what ITM is. Come on, dude. Andrew, I, look, I'm going to. That's back to the future. I saw a guy watching that. I think he means. If you can't get away from it, now, Andrew's just trying to show off what he's doing here. He's like, all right, you young whippersnappers and your white collar jobs, because Andrew knows everything about how to turn tools to and turn wrenches. Nothing Andrew doesn't know how to do when it comes to turning wrenches. He's like, you whippersnappers, you don't know crap. You might know what an ETF is, but you don't know what an ITM is uh, in time. Is that what he's saying? If you can't get away from it in time. I think he's just being a, a, trying to brag that he knows so much more about tools than I do. What tool I know is the tool I know is a band tool. So if you actually grab on the wires, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, dude, we saw. I was watching the guy on the air on the airplane watching um, uh, one of the best movies ever, uh, Back to the Future. We got the best movies ever, Back to the Future, Platoon. All right. Hoodwinked cartoon, hoodwinked cartoon, American History X, and I'm missing one. American History X, Back to the Future, Platoon, Hoodwinked, and The Red Violin, best movies ever. Uh, well, I, no, I wasn't daring. I was the exact opposite there. I was stupid. It was like, I can't remember what I was doing, but I was like trying to, I don't think I was lighting a cigarette. I was doing something. I was like, what if I, I said, what if what happens if I like this? But I can't remember what I was doing. I, mean, I wasn't that stupid. Like, what? Right, it, right. But it's like pouring out. I, I forgot. It's just dumb. You guys seen that video of the electricity? I have a clown to say, oh, man. Ugh. Oh. That's what he said. It said just get ITM just meant it. That's what he said. Oh, is that what you said too, Lola? Get away from it. There you go. Okay, gotcha. I just bought Blast from the Past recently, which is a pretty good movie and still with today's standards. I don't know anything about that. The last from the past. Let's take a look. You want to grow up and paint houses like me? Put a trailer in my yard till you're 23. 1999 film. Uh, Alicia Silverstone, Brendan Fraser, and Chris are walking. I love uh, time travel movies. Oh, let's take a look here. Let's watch this trailer. I'm the, I'm the retirement goat. All right. I'll... Yeah. I don't like getting shocked. The wrong wire three phase plasma cutter damn near killed me years ago. Oh, man. At least you set the curtains on fire in your house. All right, let's watch Blast in the Past. Let me guess. In 1962, the Cuban Missile Crisis was heating up, and the threat of nuclear war drove the Weber family underground. Cougar bombs are fake, just FYI. We know Hiroshima and Nagasaki didn't happen the way they said, just FYI. Nuclear bombs are fake. That doesn't mean nuclear power is fake, but nuclear bombs are fake. Right. Keep watching. 
long will we have to stay down here? 35 years. 35 years. For three decades, they lived a fairly normal life. That's right. But their son has become a man. What did you wish for, son? Now the time has come. I wish that I could meet a girl. For Adam to step up and discover the what world. Is what is it? The sky. I have never in my life seen anything like it before. Oh, my lucky stars. The Negro. Say what? Yeah. Well, smart man, what's up? Let me guess something. This is your first visit to La La Land. Ah! From New Line Cinema. Ooh. Ow! I've never driven before. And the director of the First Wives Club. Hi. Ooh. One champagne cocktail. Oh. I thought only hookers drink this. Well, I know Mom sure likes them. <laughs> Comes a story about a guy in his 30s. What have you been doing? I've been watching television in color. Stuck in the 60s. I love sushi. I love Lucy. Looking for love in the 90s. Right. And it's a... Uh... Who said they liked that movie? Only get Jeremy liked it. It's uh, get Jeremy liked that movie. Let me guess. No, no, Lola. To you, oh boy. Yeah, you gotta. Oh boy. So kind of. That's not Back to the Future esque. Back to the Future was fantastic. Blast in the Past was. That was a good. It was. I right, I'm gonna have to watch that. Oh, speaking of which, I saw the one on um, yeah, Penelope saw the Cabrini. I think Jill, didn't you see that too? Um, and my, oh, Napoleon Dynamite. That's the other one. Napoleon Dynamite. That's the one movie. Uh, you know, that's why are you less a person. You won't be lesser. This one, Napoleon Dynamite is classic. All right, are you guys are saying Blast from the Past was funny? All right, we saw the movie. I saw the movie when I was in um, where the hell I see it just the other day, The Shift. The shift or something like that. Yeah, the shift is that. I think the same group that did Cabrini. I think. Um, yeah, I, I don't like romantic movies either. For me, the point dynamite crushes. So funny. Oh my goodness. But the shift was pretty good. It, is, it got a little bit weak towards the end. The end was kind of weak, but uh, it was it was a good it was a good setup. It's just I was like, oh man. All right, well, Jack them sins here, so we got to go. Because you're only two hours. Oh, man, it's already two hours. All right. I get ready to get out of here, my friends. Good stuff. Um, all right. Well, all right. So some of you guys think Blast of Pass is good, man. All right. Good. Even Andrew's saying it's a good movie. So remember, Napoleon Dynamite. Uh, just watch Jeremiah Johnson. What the hell is that about? Black, uh, not Blast of Pass. Back to the Future. Uh, Yeah, Oppenheimer. I can't. Three hour movies and stuff. So we got The Point Dynamite, Hoodwinked, American History S, X, Platoon, and Back to the Future. The five best movies you'll ever see. You heard it here first. So thank me later when you see them all. You're like, damn, that's good stuff, Josh. That's uh, Jeremiah Johnson. What the hell is that about? All right, all right hold on a second. Then we'll get out of here. Jeremiah, Jeremiah Johnson. Uh, let's see what this is about. Clerks. Clerks is pretty good. Let's see here. Johnson Trip. Oh, 1972. Man, you guys are old. Let's see what we got. Nobody knows whereabouts he come from, but it don't seem to matter much. He was a young man, and ghosty stories about the tall hills didn't scare him out. Bought him a good horse and traps and another truck that went with being a mountain man and said goodbye to whatever life was down there below. This is his story. Robert Redford as Jeremiah Johnson. Jeremiah Johnson made his way into the mountains. Which war? Yeah. All right. That was all right. Um... Never saw Apocalypse Now. Is that pretty good? Fights the CO Nation. So, so Nation? I think I did see Margin Call. Yeah, Honey Will Race. Right? <laughs> honey Will Race, what gun are you? 12 gauge? Gosh. Oh, my goodness. Buddy. All right. Now, film. I don't know. Platoon is so much better. Yeah, I never saw Apocalypse Now. Never saw it. Maybe I will. 
Oh, uh, speaking of Jeremiah Johnson, Dancing with Wolves was fantastic too. Dancing with Wolves was uh, was great. That was great. All right, get out of here, my friends. God bless. We'll see you guys. And uh, thanks again for being here. And if you find yourself on the Daily Coast, hey, there you go. If you find yourself quoted on the Daily Coast, all right, we'll see you guys. Thanks again. We'll see you, man. Appreciate y'all.